and got to turn down this freaking cold air conditioning. Today's video is going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit different. We haven't done one like this in quite some time, and that's why I thought I would do it. So we're going to roll on back here, and introduce you to an old friend. Get this thing pulled out here and take a peek at it. So here it is. I don't know how long it's been parked in here, um, but usually first gens never disappoint you, and they usually always fire up pretty easy. However, um, the dash didn't even come on, so it might not start. Let's try again. Finally got it pulled out. It was a tight fit, but uh, we got it out. Here it is. Freaking filthy though. Not as dirty as my blue first gen, but it definitely got dusty sitting in that barn for who knows how long. Probably been uh, probably been about a month. I think ever since my dad bought his 392 scat pack, this has pretty much been parked. For those of you who have watched the channel, he's got the first gen, he's got the nasty red flatbed 12 valve compound turbo truck that we did on the channel here, actually in this shop, when I used to do all my stuff here. And then we also, he's got his King Ranch, his 2013 King Ranch that's got the 2017 uh, retro kit for the turbo and piping and all that stuff on it. It's actually really, really sweet. I just wanna let this thing run a little bit longer and then we're gonna do just a little bit of a video around the truck. I really haven't filmed this thing in so long. I feel like there's just a lot of people that would like to see one of the old trucks that we used to film every single day. This is actually the first truck. Those of you who remember, the very beginning of Loud and Proud and me basically doing YouTube at all, the very, very start of that, this is what happened. And just crazy story. The other day, I was talking about the Lord's goodness and I was basically going over all the different little things that basically led up to this moment in my life and how I got here so far. And there's so many little things that I didn't put in that video that I could have if I wanted to go on for hours and hours and hours. But let me just tell you another small example of how important this truck is right here and how we got that truck and how something that seems horrible is actually something that turned out to be an absolute blessing, a miracle, and just amazing. This truck, the, the way we got this truck, my dad had just bought a new property, right? He just bought 72 acres over close to us and he had bought a Polaris Ranger side-by-side -side and a Polaris ATV. Side-by-side -side was brand new. I mean, it's a $15,000 machine, and then the ATV was like a $4,000 ATV. It was a used Polaris ATV. We had the ATV and the side-by-side -side for, I wanna say, I wanna say two years. And after about two years, we had gotten robbed at that property. Four-wheeler and side-by-side -side stolen. Keep in mind, I have not started Loud and Proud yet. I haven't done a single video on Loud and Proud. And those got stolen, and my dad had always wanted a first gen. Well, he's not, he, he didn't really need one, but he's just like, well, what the heck? I got this freaking insurance check now, you know, for 15 grand. I wanna buy something that's a cool old classic pickup or so, just something that's not gonna depreciate so fast like an ATV and a side-by-side. -side. You buy them, five years later, they're worth like half of what you paid for them, if not less than that. So. He decided, I'm gonna go buy a first gen. I thought, well, if he's gonna buy a first gen anyway, like, I'm gonna film this, you know? Like, I'm gonna film this and put it on YouTube because freaking first gens are cool, you know? And I hadn't posted anything yet. So then I filmed our first video, which was picking this thing up. I think it's got like 90 some thousand views on it. And that was my first successful YouTube video. That was the first video I ever posted on Loud and Proud. And then after that, I filmed with this truck for probably a month. And after I saw how much attention that it was getting, like the 12 hour stuff, I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. And this is back in 2017, early 2017. I then decided I'm gonna sell my car. And if you guys remember the videos, you remember this. I thought, man, I'm gonna sell my car and buy another 12 valve. Because if I'm gonna drive a vehicle, I might as well drive a vehicle that I can make videos with to help out my channel. Because maybe I can do something for YouTube for a career. And I wasn't sure what I was gonna do yet. But I thought maybe I might as well try it. You know, I've got a car that's probably worth nine grand. Let me see if I can sell it and find some 12 valve out there. Well, I bought the rustiest 12 valve ever. But that has nothing to do with the main point of the story. The main point of the story is, those ATVs getting stolen, robbery, thieves taking something from us led to us getting this truck with an insurance check, which led to me filming my first YouTube video for the truck channel, which led to me then getting my first 12 valve because I saw the success that I was having with that truck, which then led to me doing YouTube for over a year, which led to me doing my first giveaway, which led to me meeting Reagan, which led to me having our boy that we have now and everything else, like just so many small things. Like even that was something that I kind of, like I didn't forget about how it happened, but like when you look at how different life could have been if that had not happened, if those 
thieves would not have stolen something from us. How would we have had that truck when it popped up for sale at the right time when that insurance check came in to then me film my first video to then everything just kind of line up and just go to plan like you know what I mean it is hard to find a super pristine low mileage 80,000 mile first gen so the timing that that popped up for sale right after my dad got the check me making my first video all that stuff led up to where we are right now you guys got to take this stuff into consideration like I'm very sentimental but I'm also very deep when it comes to the meaning behind certain things and how certain things come about and when you look back you know hindsight's 2020 for some people when you look back you should be able to look at all the tough times and go holy crap if that wouldn't have happened today would be so much different you know what I'm saying so you got to look at that sometimes and go wow that sucked but thank you Jesus that that happened so I can be where I am right now you know what I'm saying you got to change your perspective sometimes but let's get into looking at this truck here and look around it a little bit let me just do a quick recap for everybody that has not seen this truck ever and maybe you're newer to the channel you haven't been around you know for the two three years that we've been well three years now for sure that we've been doing youtube here it's a 1992 w250 12 valve truck is an automatic four-wheel drive of course got locking hubs okay there's your four-wheel drive lever 85,000 original miles now when i say 85,000 original miles. I'm not saying like 85,000 original miles, but the gauge cluster isn't out of this truck or the truck's been freaking frame off restored and all this crap. No, like actually legitimately, it's an 85,000 mile truck. The truck originally when we got it, it had all of the original moldings, moldings down the side. You know, these are all black. These moldings here had the original grill on all this other stuff, but it needed some work, not tons, but it needed some because when we took the moldings off, it was all rusted underneath on the back, um, on the back fenders. So we had all the rust repaired, moldings were all taken off, rust was all cut out, all the bodywork was all redone. Truck was completely repainted, top to bottom, the whole nine yards, everything was done, redone. So all the original white and what we decided to do was not put the moldings back on and just put the front and rear moldings on for the wheel wells and then just paint those white to kind of match the paint. The grill, we still have the original grill. It's hanging up on the shop wall right there. We just figured while we were working on it and doing engine stuff to it that it would make more sense to have a not factor grill on it. That's that way if we're leaning on it and stuff like that, we don't crack the original grill. So that's why we did that. Original interior other than headliner. Headliner was redone about oh three years ago now the headliner was done original bench not ripped at all got all your fancy stuff it's a limited edition so you got powered windows power mirrors stuff like that wood grain trim you know because high-end features for a limited edition back in the day all the bells and whistles for 93 we did a diy bed liner kit in this truck a few years back looks good and miguel our paint guy actually completely repainted this badge strip up here to get as close as he could to matching the color of the tail light so that way it kind of looked like it went together you know across the back and then in terms of the lettering he didn't repaint the lettering down here and he didn't repaint obviously the original like brushed aluminum look here this freaking rooster i'm telling you he will not shut up i'm about to turn him into a fried chicken for dinner if he does not stop he left the brushed aluminum finish on the badging other than that that's all he did was the red strip there that he painted he also did a quick little sand and paint of this portion right here because it was just kind of wore out from somebody putting a ball on there. Huge eight inch tip on it, which I thought was super cool back when I was 17 and started doing YouTube. I was like, man, giant exhaust tips get so many views. So let's do that. So that's what we did. For the most part, that's pretty much it. I can show you under the hood and show you what we got going under there. Old school, you got these big old, you know, give it a good old yank. Get that hood latch undone. Uh -huh. So come under the hood, you've got an entire pusher intake system and intercooler piping kit. So you've got a three and a half inch mega intake, three and a half inch piping kit. It's either four or five inch intake piping mounted to the alternator. And then you've got your huge cold air intake right here. And I know guys are like, oh my gosh, it's not a true cold air intake because it's right by the engine. It's in the engine bay. Well, where else are you supposed to put it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's in the engine bay. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, there is cold air that blows up through this little vent right there. Um, that's where the original cold air intake was from the factory or just intake, I guess, in general. Not necessarily cold air, but, you know. I guess it was supposed to be separated off from the rest of the engine bay to keep it a cold air. It wasn't high flow. But anyways, air can blow in through there. 
um, and air just freaking blows straight through this drill, straight into the engine bay going down the road. So, I mean, I don't know how much better you're trying to make it, but uh, it's as good as it can get. Um, there's the high flow intake piping still, intercooler piping, I mean, going down below the intake. Pretty much it, other than 50 horse injectors. Oh, one more thing. This truck had a rebuilt pump about 200 miles ago, which was about three, two and a half months, two or, two or three months ago. Um, truck was starting to high idle really bad and just really bad, like screaming, screaming, screaming. And we're like, what the heck? And then it just got worse and worse and worse. And the idle was not fixing itself. I mean, it was just really, really bad. So I was like, okay, this isn't like something I can fix because I don't want to tear into the pump. And I know that if I tear into the pump, the truck is really stuck here. So either way though, we had it towed. We had somebody come pick up the truck, tow it about three miles. So it was ended up being a free tow through AAA. $2,200 to have the pump rebuilt. They're like, yeah, I don't know why, but at 80,000 miles, the pump was like all chewed up inside and it was already starting to show lots of signs of wear. So yeah, that was great. So um, pump is rebuilt though. So it's got pretty much new injectors, new pump, all new intercooler piping, intake piping. I think that's it. I think that's pretty much it. Other than that, it's it's stock, you know, besides the exhaust. Just a super cool, clean, reliable truck. So for everybody that hasn't seen it, this is the original first gen that started the channel. I may or may not be purchasing this off my dad. I'm still a little bit undecided, and he's still a little bit undecided as to whether or not he wants to sell it. But uh, I may or may not be buying this truck off my dad. So, um... Yeah. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was a little bit, a little bit different like the last couple have been, but I thought it would be a good one to share with you guys. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you want to enter to win this truck, today is your last day to enter, and then the giveaway will be gone. You can take home this 2015 G56 six-speed manual Cummins with $5,000 cash, and it's tonight at midnight. So if you want to get in, last chance. It's now or never. 26,000 miles on it, 2015. It's got leather interior, navigation, Wi-Fi hotspot. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, it's it's a fully loaded regular cab, and uh, we made it just right for you. So, anyways, guys, thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next video.